So obviously, this cannot continue forever. And the outcome will be that the flow will have to reserve, that it have to reverse itself, and it will. Maybe it's not possible to predict exactly when and how it will play itself out, but it's going to happen. So what happens is that uh, first the, uh, ho- the, uh, the speculators will realize that it's, we are getting close to the point where uh, that's the end of this flow and it will reverse itself. So they start selling and even short selling certain key marketable commodities. It could be wheat, it could be oil, it could be whatever. It's not important what it is, but there will be something where the problem is most acute. And, and the uh, speculators are not responsible. They are just the agent who will pull the trigger. But the trigger will be pulled by somebody sooner or later anyhow. So it's very foolish to blame the speculators either for hoarding or for starting the, this hoarding process. But once it starts, oh, by the way, and remember that interest rates are still very low. So what happens is that the, uh, the uh, flow reverses itself and uh, these marketable goods get to the market, the price will be suppressed, and money comes out of the commodity market and money flows into the bond market. And uh, as it does, interest rates will rise. Why? Because uh, more bonds will be bought, which means... uh, I think... You mean More fall. Interest rate will fall. Interest rates fall. Yeah. Okay. Interest rates fall. They were high. You, I think you meant when you're going out of the bond market into the commodity market, they're rising. They are. Then, the then flip. turns around. Yeah. Okay. Thanks uh, for correcting me. And uh, and the flow of money now is in the opposite direction. Commodity market to. The bond. And there could be a panic as part of this. There could be a panic, and usually is. And, uh, and uh, uh, again, this is something that will not resolve itself in a few days, a few weeks, or even a few months. This will take years to rectify. Uh, professor, I'm hearing a lot of talk about American farmers holding produce off the market. They have built their own granaries or or storage facilities and there's huge quantities of corn, wheat, and so on that is not going on the market and it's not in the bins. And I think this is part of this process, Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that farmers are hoarding their grain more and more. And it's interesting to notice that just right now the U.S. government passed laws enabling themselves to seize all these things, all the mag, uh, products, and so on, by department, by department. And Sandy, you're smiling, so I think you've heard about this. <laughs> Sounds very Roman. Okay. Now, uh, I would like to summarize this a little bit, because this is, uh, I think, very important. Uh, the uh, the uh, cause of the problem, and this could be a very big pr- problem, all kinds of dislocations in the economy, artificial short shortages, artificial surpluses, and this price distortion, interest rate distortion, all this. Because of this anti-gold propaganda and anti-gold action on the part of the government and the banking system. And the very idea of Pulling gold coin circulation, uh, gold coins out of circulation, and hoarding the gold coins in central bank vaults is a perverse idea. It's it's completely misguided, 
and I want to use a simile here which will probably help you understand this point. Now, the suggestion is that the government is doing a favor to society because there is such a thing as wear and tear. Now, when gold coins are in circulation, go from hand to hand to hand, what happens is that they get worn and they lose weight and they uh, are less valuable and so on. And, and uh, this is uh, admittedly uh, 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 something that one has to worry about because if the gold coin is substandard as far as weight is concerned because of, uh, because of wear and tear, then it can no longer be used for purchases by counting it out. And what you have to do with it is you just put the gold coins on a scale and exchange takes place by weight. And that's clumsy, it's uh, unnecessarily uh, time consuming and it should be avoided. The, gold, the idea and the beauty of gold coin circulation is that you can make payments quickly. If you have to pay $10, you just take $1 coins and count them. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. But if they are worn, then they are not acceptable anymore by counting them out. You just have to put them on the scale, and then uh, you might question that the scale is not uh, fraudulent, not tampered with, and, and so on, all kinds of complications. So if we want to have smooth trade, prob problem-free trade, we should have full-bodied gold coins. But that is, of course, uh, not possible, because if gold coins are in circulation, now, the, uh, I, uh, this is just a sideline. The original meaning of the word legal tender was exactly the opposite of what it is today. Today, gold, uh, today uh, uh, legal tender means coercion. The government is forcing you to accept a worthless paper in, in full payment of, of that. But originally, the meaning of legal tender was this. A gold coin within a tolerance limit was legal tender. In other words, even if it was underweight. But the, uh, the, uh, the deficiency did not exceed the tolerance standard. Uh, the law provided for uh, legal tender protection, it had to be accepted. But the loss was not yours because you could take your worn coin within the tolerance standard to the mint and the mint was obliged to exchange your worn coin for a freshly minted full-bodied gold coin. And the government absorbed the loss the same way as the government uh, pays for uh, maintenance of highways. There's wear and tear not only in gold coin circulation but also in highway use. And this wear and tear is taken care of by regular maintenance and that costs money and the government absor absorbs this cost uh, by uh, uh, levying taxes and paying for the road repair out of these uh, tax revenues. So uh, the argument used by the government was that oh, we take gold coins out of circulation. It's, uh, they are useless anyhow. We, we have perfectly good paper and that's cheap to replace. If it gets worn, we just we draw it and replace it. So, uh, 
the uh, theory was developed. Uh, could I just interject one thing here? This is amazing because paper is not free to print when you're talking about $1 bills. As a matter of fact, it becomes really expensive because you, the value printed on it is very low. And in Canada, first the $1 and then then the two dollar became coins because the coins can circulate with less wear and tear. So to say that we replaced gold which wears with paper is, is nonsense. Paper wears just as much, maybe more. It's only if there's a large denomination of paper that the wear becomes less. You can print a big value. See what I'm saying? Even in the U.S. they're talking about not circulating the, the paper dollar at low denomination because it wears out so often. You have to print so many of them. So. I remember very well that I was a child, a mere child, probably six years old or something, and I, I, that was uh, 1939 or something, just before the war, World War II broke out. And I asked my father that why don't we have gold coins in circulation, because I did know that there was such a thing after, before World War I. Well, why don't we have it now? And my f father gave this pat explanation, which was spread by the government and central bank, that, you know, my son, in circulation, the gold coin gets worn. And the gold coin is very valuable. And in order to protect the gold against that wear and tear, which is a loss, the government provides safe facilities to have the gold stored and instead puts these beautiful banknotes into circulation. The effigy of the king is there, whoever the dictator is there. It's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful embellishment. It's a work of art. And there's a promise. You see lots of signatures on this. Yes. These are general, these are honorable gentlemen, <laughs> very knowledgeable about money, and they make sure that this will keep its value, which of course was in 19th. 39 was still true because there was no real inflation. But what came afterwards it was another story. Now, this goes to show that the government had this uh, explanation ready that we are protecting the integrity of the gold coinage by putting it in the safe. And people had something which is just as good. Now, the same argument, if applied to highways, would be the following. <laughs> the government is <laughs> producing lovely highways, beautiful, perfect in every way. But no sooner is the highway completed, there are going to be roadblocks, because the government wants to protect the highway against wear and tear. <laughs> So what's the point? What's the point of building highway? Well, I just thought that this was too, big, too good to miss that <laughs> remark. But you see my point, that this is just a completely false argument. And of course, nowadays, you could put gold coins in plastic cover, which would protect them against wear and tear. You, I thought you were, OK. Now, I, I could talk about a lot of things, and they are mostly uh, written in this uh, lecture nine, and probably you will have to read them on your own. But uh, this is this flow of money back and forth between the bond market and the commodity market uh, manifests itself in terms of the inflationary and deflationary cycle, which are, which are 
long cycles. They take several years, perhaps decade, a decade, as long as a decade, to develop. So as money flows from the bond market to the commodity market, this is usually known as the inflationary uh, uh, inflationary spiral. Spiral, yeah, spiral is the word I was looking for. And when it reverses itself and money starts to flow from the commodity market to the bond market, this is the opposite. This is the deflationary spiral. They are both damaging and, uh, and cause a lot of social <coughs> damage. And the important thing to notice is that they are completely preventable. And that is what gold is for. If you concentrate all hoarding to gold and all this hoarding to gold, then all this disruptive uh, sequence of events which occur uh, if people are hoarding marketable but consumable goods other than gold, then they are avoided. Gold hoarding is harmless, whereas hoarding marketable goods is harmful. And if you want to avoid these harms which come to society, then you have to bring back gold coin circulation. It's a gold coin standard. It's not a gold bullion standard or a gold exchange standard. And, and gold has to enter the circulation. And I mentioned when I say gold, I always mean silver as well, because smaller payments obviously are not expedient if you try to make the coins, gold coins so small, then you are better off if you make them out of silver. And especially wages, when wage payments are made, uh, the uh, morale, the work morale gets boosted. Now this is something you uh, may not have had the experience yourself, but those who did, and I am among them, uh, when, when they introduced uh, silver coins, the work morale j just changes as if by magic. Because, because when people first get paid in silver coin, which uh, are not just beautiful, but they clink. You drop them, the ring of the silver coin is quite different from the ring of a copper or uh, nickel or whatever else you have. And, and uh, absenteeism is cut back, people are anxious not to miss a day of work because they are looking forward to the payday when they will, they will get the silver coin. I, rem I remember as a, as a as a child, small child, uh, my grandparents gave us a silver coin every time we visited them. And, and uh, it was just a great pleasure to get it. <laughs> because they, they were selected, they were shiny. They made sure that they uh, gave us these shiny, beautiful silver coins. So the morale changes, the work morale, and, uh, it, it's just a magic. You have to see it to believe it. What difference it makes when coins enter into general circulation. And, uh, and that is what uh, we would like to have. And that's why I, I am saying that one of the keys to the solution is open, open the mint to gold and silver. More fully, open the mint to the unlimited and free coinage of gold and silver. And the, the, you see the uh, argument that, oh, the government doesn't have gold, is completely inapplicable because it's not government gold which is being coined. People will bring their own gold, bullion, 
and they want the coins. The coins have all kinds of utilities, and one of them is the greater marketability than the bullion. So uh, I, I think I will finish with just that thought that open the mint to gold is a slogan. But I think it's a good slogan and we should keep repeating it until the government listens and, and does it, opens the mint to gold. As the US Constitution, among others, demands, it's in the Constitution, it's the constitutional right of the citizen to uh, determine the uh, quantity of money in circulation. Because if there's not enough gold in, oh, I'm sorry, not enough money in circulation in the opinion of the private individual, there's something he can or she can do about it. Uh, he or she can take gold to the mint and exchange it ounce for ounce uh, for uh, gold coinage and same for silver. So the slogan is open the men to gold and silver. Thank you. Yes. Fifteen minute break.